Welcome to PK Glitz, home of Jammy Classes. We want to thank you for joining us today and also want to remind you to visit our website so that you'll really know what's up to date, what's hot and what's going on. And we want to remind you to be sure and get to the store where you'll find a complete line of all the products that you'll need for the classes. We've got a wonderful line of projects, cards, all kinds of things lined up for you this season. So, without further ado, let's get Get started. A spotlight card is when you do two cards, one in color, one in black and white. Then you take a section out of the colored card, lay it over the black and white, and it gives you a really interesting look. They're very quick, easy to do, and I think an awful lot of fun. Now to do ours today, we're going to use one of our pre-printed pictures from PK Glitz. It's called Country Pumpkin. We're going to use some of our Spectrum Noir alcohol pens. I'm going to be using GB5, OR1, CT3, CR10, DG2, and DG4 for my pumpkin. Now later on we'll also need a little tape to put our card together with. My quarter inch sticky tape works really, really well. I started with one of my pumpkins. I'm going to go ahead and do the others in the leaves now. And we're going to do this pumpkin in what I call a base color technique. I call it that because we're going to start with a base color and then we're just going to start with our darker colors and work on up. My base color is going to be my CT3. I'm going to use my chisel end to start and I'm simply going to fill in the entire pumpkin. Now I'm not going to be able to get the whole thing because I won't be able to get the detail so now I'll switch. Remember that gray bar means my point. I'm going to come to my little bullet point here and finish doing my pumpkin. Now those of you who have worked with alcohol ink know it does bleed. So we need to be really careful that we just come close to the edge of our print. Not quite at it, but just close. That way when it does bleed out just a little bit, it won't give us a halo of color around the outside edge of our piece. Now we're going to put that one to the side. We're going to go to the darkest of the colors that we have left. That's going to be my CR10. And I'm going to start doing my shadow work. I'm going to let the picture actually help me. I'm just going to come in here and wherever there's shadow on my picture I'll add a, a little bit of this darker rich color all the way around. Of course there's a little shadow that comes up along the edges of the pumpkin and some that comes down from the top as well. So we'll add a little bit in there. But now I also want to be sure that as I'm doing this I'm keeping some shape. I don't want this to look like a little candy corn with straight lines. We want to keep some nice oval, almost orange wedge type shapes going with our piece so that we have a really nice rounded look when we're through. Now let's go on to the next darkest. That's going to be my OR1. And we're going to start right where we left off with that last color. We're just going to continue on up all the way around. Remember, keep that nice oval shape going. Now don't, don't turn it into a candy kiss, candy corn. And here we go, same thing here. And wherever that color came down from the top, let's add a little bit there as well. Of course, now here is the wonderful, wonderful part about your alcohol pens. Now we can come in wherever that line was a little bit strong between those first two colors and just go over it. Just keep working it, feathering it until, and remember we're going through, so be real careful about what you're working on. Just keep feathering over that line until the whole area is softened. And that's really kind of up to you, how much feathering you'd like to have. I like a lot of contrast in my work, so I probably might leave a little more color than, than you would, but again, that's strictly up to you. Now, once we're satisfied with that, we'll go on to our next color, and I'm going to use my GB5, golden brown, and we'll go wherever we stopped with that orange, we'll just come on in, Continue on. If you want to leave a little sunshine window over in one or two of these places, you can do that. We'll come back and take care of that in just a moment. And then once again, wherever you started that color, just come over that line. Just keep on feathering, keep on softening 
until those colors blend together. Now this does take just a little bit of time within the paper. And speaking of that, your paper, uh, once again, very, very important. You do need to use at least an 80 pound or premium or alcohol type paper so that it will work. Your alcohol is able to work within the paper and your colors are able to blend. Now let's go back to that very first color that we used. That was our CT3. We're going to go over that little sunshine window there just a little bit, just so we can tie all of those colors together. And there's our lovely little pumpkin, all ready to work. Now if you're not quite satisfied with some of your colors, you can always go back. You can always add a little bit if you want to. So don't feel like if you've done it one time that you, you can't go back and do a little bit of adjusting if you'd like. That's okay as well. Now, let's do a few quick leaves. Leaves for fall are such fun, and I find that using my dull green 2 and 4 really accomplishes a lot. I'm going to take a little bit of the 2, and that's going to be a little shadow on each one of my leaves. So I'm just adding a little bit of that dull green 2 on there. Then we're going to go back. It is fall, so let's grab a little bit more of that golden brown. We're going to have a little bit of golden brown on a few of our leaves, so we'll just put a little bit of that in there. And then, of course, lots of red during the fall, too. So let's take just a little hint of that red. We'll add a little bit of that on a couple of our leaves. Now, this is where it all comes together. We take the lighter of our greens, our DG2, and we're simply going to start in the center of the leaf and just push that color out. So from the center, right over the top of the colors you've already laid down there, just push that color on out. Now remember, don't quite go to the edge. It is going to bleed a little bit, so we want to give it a little room for that to, uh, to bleed out or to wick out. Come back, let's go to the next one now. From the center, just push over the top all the way. And if you feel like you need just a, a little more softening, you can simply go back with this lighter color again in that area you want to be just a little bit softer and then just blend that out a little bit more. I'm just going to go over each leaf from the center out. But now leave a little bit of that interesting color. That's what makes fall fun. Okay, and then we'll catch this last one right here. Add a little bit of our dull green in there. And I really like that. I think that's going to give us a wonderful, wonderful look. Now I'm going to come back there are a couple of little flowers in there, so let's grab our CT3 again. Let's fill in those fun little yellow pumpkin flowers. I actually had a garden this year with pumpkins in it, so I got to see some of those pretty little flowers. And then we almost left off our stem. Let's come back with our darker green. And first we'll just add a little bit of dark green on that stem. Then, you know it, we're going to come back in with that DG2. Finish that off, just kind of blend those two colors together a little bit. And then for the curls, let's do something a little bit different. Instead of drawing a line which allows your piece to wick, dot your line. Tiny little dots will give you the illusion that the whole thing is colored, but it doesn't put so much ink down that it wicks. So it gives you a really nice look. Okay, And there we go. There's our great little pumpkin duo. The colored ones already to cut a circle out now for our spotlight card. Okay, I've got my circle cutter and I happen to be using the memories cutter. It works real well for me. I use it quite a little bit. And I've chosen to cut a two inch circle. So I'm going to cut all the way around. I'm just picking out a portion of my card that I thought was especially pretty. Now this is going to go by the wayside here. If I can pick it up, it will. There we go. And then we're going to match our card on our black and white. And this really gets to be the fun part. It's kind of like a puzzle. And you're just going to turn it to you. That looks just about right to me. I see all of the curls. Now, isn't that interesting? I think that's such a neat look. Now that we know where we're going, let's take some of our double-sided sticky tape. We're going to go all the way around our piece, just like so. We want to be sure that this really gets some good adhesive on it, because we do want it to stay in place. I'm going to put a piece right there across the center as well. 
And once we've got that down nice and tight, we'll just peel away all the little extra pieces. And now that we've got that done, let's go back again. Let's place it back in position. There's my stem. There's my leaf. There's my curl. I think that is right on. Okay, and we'll just press that in place. Now from here, it's a real simple step over to layering it, adding a little bit of a message, and having a wonderful card that you can send out for the Thanksgiving holidays. Thank you for joining our Jammy class today. Wasn't that fun? Be sure to go to the website and join our email family. As email family members, you'll receive Jammy class updates, coupons, new product information, and much, much more. We look forward to seeing you again next time.